In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. In the waters of baptism, Barbara died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. We shall have the first hymn, I the Lord of Sea and Sky.
I'd like to welcome all of us to the sacrifice of the Holy Mass, which we offer for the repose of the soul of Barbara Lambden. This also gives us the opportunity to pray for her husband, and we trust that he also is resting in peace. May Barbara reunite with him in the joy of heaven. I will now please these symbols of faith, the book of the Gospels and the crucifix, symbols that inspired and encouraged Barbara in her Christian journey. I will place them now on a casket. In life, Barbara cherished the Gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet her with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. In baptism, Barbara received the sign of the cross. May she now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. Please may we sit and now invite Anthony Lambden to present the eulogy. Now, thank you all for taking the time to share this day with us as we remember the life of Barbara Philomena Lambden, and also to remember Ralph, who sadly passed away during the COVID pandemic. Thanks especially for those of you who have traveled far or have flown in from foreign parts to be with us today. It's not an easy task to sum up in a few minutes such a full and wonderful life of this very special lady. You'll all remember her in your own different ways. I'm going to share with you some of my own thoughts. Barbara was born 90 years ago in Preston, Lancashire, and was always proud of her Lancastrian roots. A lifelong Preston North End football supporter, she would be delighted to know, along with my lovely Preston cousins, that they are today 40 places ahead of Reading in the Football League. <laughs> Although she grew up during the war, I never heard any complaints. She had a happy childhood with her mother and father, Josie and Gerald, and a much-loved and missed older brother, Gerald, also. As a child, Barbara attended Lark Hill Convent in Preston and St. Monica's Convent in Skipton. And from there, she went on to Manchester University, where she studied teacher training and met Ralph. Now, he knew a good thing when he saw one and quickly converted to Catholicism to ma in order to marry her soon afterwards. They moved to Edinburgh for a short time, where Paula was born, and then after a quick stay in Enborn, bought number seven wheel drives, and that would be 63 years ago. Gillian, Mark, myself and Celia followed in quick order, testa testament to uh, Ralph and Barbara's enthusiasm <laughs> and their commitment to the Catholic faith. 
Barbara and Ralph made a great team and were fabulous parents. And along with their home in Wheel Drive, they always seemed to be full of sunshine, love and laughter, ensured us a happy and stimulating childhood. A launch pad for us, enabling us to leave home with confidence and returning from time to time when things changed. Always welcome, no questions asked. It became a magnet for family and friends. They welcomed everybody with open arms. Many were the times when the lounge door would open in the morning and Barbara would find hungover teenagers sleeping everywhere. This would never faze her and her response would be, good morning, anyone for a cup of tea? <laughs> As I look round, I'm aware that many of you will remember this and of course, the many excellent parties they hosted. Barbara and Relight, Barbara and Ralph were also delighted to welcome Steve, Adam, Bev, Brendan and Tony into the fold, making their transition into the family seem like the easiest thing in the world. They loved their family holidays and would think nothing of packing us all up in a car and driving to France or Spain for a camping holiday. As their grandchildren came along, they would like nothing better than to spend some holiday time with all of us in some absolutely fabulous locations. The past few years were not easy for Barbara. She was struggling with osteoporosis and dementia. Ralph cared for her as best he could and with much love until he passed away. She bore these burdens as she lived her life with dignity and resolve, never losing her sense of humour or the twinkle in her eye. We managed with the help of some great professional carers to look after Barbara's needs at home where she peacefully passed away with family by her side. So I'd like to thank Dorina and Fiona for taking such good care of Barbara and to Bernard and Father Gaston for ensuring her spiritual well-being. Were Barbara and Ralph to be looking down on everyone here now, I imagine Ralph, Ralph might look slightly bemused as to how everyone has turned out so well. But of course he would be as pleased as punch. Barbara beside him, as fitting, would as always be making sure we're all safe and happy and continuing to cover us with her unbounded love. So, farewell, Mum. Absolutely outstanding job. Thank you so much, Anthony. I have no doubt that even the heavenly cohorts are also clapping for Barbara. Please may we stand. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Barbara, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please may we sit for the readings. And the first reading will be done by Celia Lambden. Ecclesiastes 3, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. 
Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now have the psalm, the Lord is compassion and love. Now have the second reading to be done by Jill Lambden. Uh, this is a reading from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and have not love, I am a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and knew all the secrets and all knowledge, yea, if I had all faith so that I could remove mountains and had not love, I were nothing. And though I feed the poor with all my goods, and though I give my body that I be burned and have not love, it profiteth me nothing. Love suffereth long, it is bountiful. Love envieth not. Love does not boast itself. It is not puffed up. It doth no uncomely thing. It seeketh not her own thing. It is not provoked to anger. It thinketh no evil. It rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. It suffereth all things, it believeth all things, it hopeth all things, it endureth all things. Love doth never fall away, 
though that prophesyings be abolished or the tongues cease or knowledge vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but then that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be abolished. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a dark glass, through, through a glass darkly, but then shall we see face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and love, even these three, but the chiefest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. It is my Father's will, says the Lord, that whoever believes in the Son shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise him up on the last day. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you, I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Please may we say it. I want to begin this brief reflection by thanking God. And I thank God for giving me the opportunity to perform an essential part of my ministry in the life of Barbara, bringing the comfort of the church to those who are sick. And I did that for the past year after my arrival in this parish. And I take this opportunity to salute the consistency of Bernard Fians, who always went to check on Barbara the week before, and he would send an email, Father, I checked on Barbara, and she was great today. We can have a a visit next week. And we did that all along. And my journey with Barbara this one year made me to discover a person who is welcoming. There were times Barbara was not great when I just started, but thanks to the grace of the Holy Eucharist and the expertise of all those who were looking after her, we we thank God for them, Barbara greatly improved and interacted so well with us. And the days I went in when Barbara was really bright, she would stare into my eyes and stretch her hands to make me welcome. And I think that is the heart she she had. And as Anthony has rightly said, she loved having people by her. So her heart also was a home, a home where people could find love, where people could find support, 
where people could find peace. And another thing which really brightened my visits to Barbara was her sense of humor. She made every effort to make you laugh. And even if you did not laugh, her laughter would provoke you to laugh. And all the times when I left, I left really fulfilled. And I think today I also want to say thank you to you, the family. You gave the very best to Barbara. She lived her final months with dignity. And I think there could not have been any other better care than what you gave her. And so I thank and praise the carers. I believe the readings you have chosen for this Mass have been inspired by the reverence you have for Barbara. And the first reading talks about the fact that God has planned everything and everything happens at the right time for God's glory and for our good. And in relation to this, I must say God gave Barbara this opportunity to experience your love. That is why he preserved her till 90. And you have had the opportunity to show her your gratitude. You've had the opportunity to make her realize that the effort she made to look after you, her family, are recognized and appreciated. And we pray that as she has gone forth, she will reign with God in peace. And the second reading, really, I can say it is a reading in praise of Barbara, a mother whose heart was full of love. And that reading talks about love as a reality that moves us to be patient, that moves us to be self-effacing, thinking first about the happiness of others and sacrificing everything possible to be there for others. And this is what Barbara tried to do as a mother. We pray that she may reign in the fullness of this love in heaven, where she will meet the one who is love himself, God. And the gospel which you chose gives us this understanding that God has prepared a place for everyone. Everyone who seeks to serve him and Barbara made her own effort. She and Ralph, her husband, were so committed, taking part in the Catinian activities, making friendship in Christ, and doing works of charity, giving hope to people. We pray that she who also made others feel welcomed, supported, may find a comfortable room in the bosom of Abraham. And we pray that Mary, our mother, she will comfort us in our sorrow. May comfort you, the family. Stay united. Pray for each other. And keep standing by one another. So we pray that she will meet her husband, Ralph, and there they will continue to look after the family. You have not lost her. You have not lost her love. You have not lost her protection. Because I believe, having received all the comfort of the church, anointing of the sick, and we prayed and asked God to forgive her sins, I believe she will reign in heaven. And there she will continue to pray for each one of you. So thank you, and may God bless and comfort you. Amen. I will now invite us to stand for the bidding prayers. And that will be done by Mark Lambden. To God, the Father Almighty, dear brothers and sisters, may every prayer of our hearts be directed for his will it is that all humanity should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth.
today and every day. Let there be peace within. Trust that you're exactly where you're meant to be. Don't forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith and love and use the gifts that you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you all. Be content with who you are and be confident knowing that you are a child of God. Let this knowledge settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to sing, to dance, to praise and to love. May the road, road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm on your face and the rain fall soft on your fields. May God hold you in the palm of his hand. Let us pray. For the relatives and friends of Barbara who can't be here today, may you find strength, love and support in our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have loved and have died. We remember especially Ralph and Adam and Gerald and Rita and Ian. God, give them the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who care for the sick and for the dying, especially the people that cared so well and so lovingly for Barbara more recently. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for all of us here today that our memory of Barbara and others we have loved and lost will inspire us with a renewed love for our brothers and our sisters and our lovers and our friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us seek the intercession of Mary, our mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sister, Barbara. Cleanse her of her sins and grant her the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please may we sit. We shall have the offertory hymn, the Lord's my shepherd.
please may we stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Barbara, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please may we kneel if you can. If you cannot kneel, please sit. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Barbara, with Saint Ralph, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Philip, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Barbara and your servant Ralph, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they, who were united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please may we stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us mercy. Please may we still kneel or sit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We now come to the distribution of Holy Communion for which Father Gaston will be on the right-hand side of the casket and Stephen, our Eucharistic minister, will be on this left-hand side of the casket. Um, if for any reason you're not able to receive communion, which, which is for practicing Catholics, we still encourage you, you'll be very welcome to come forward for a blessing, which you may do or which you may indicate by just placing your hands across your chest like this. So whichever side of the church you're on and whatever you're coming for, if you could approach down the center aisle together and then return to your place down the appropriate side aisle, please.
Please may we stand. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Barbara may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This may we remain standing for the final commendation. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Barbara, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Barbara again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Enfold Barbara in your love, O Lord, and may your light shine through her forever. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Barbara in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Barbara in this life, they are signs to us of your goodness and of your fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now give us the final blessing before we have the final hymn. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
now we have the recessional music. Thank you. 